Hey, True Believers England Teen here with another Comic Book Origins. This, for the new people, is where we take a look at the very first issue of any character, be they superhero or villain, or we even look at teens and sometimes places and things. In this case, we're looking at Magic and Dispel, created by Carl Barks in 1961. Yeah, a little older than Spider-Man. Check that out. Yeah, he created her to be a continuous uh, villain, for Uncle Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> and her entire uh, life is spent trying to steal his lucky penny, which she believes could bring her fabulous wealth. Carl Barks didn't want to create your typical ugly witch like Mad Mim or Witch Hazel and the sort, so he took inspiration, and I'm kidding you not, from Gina Lola Brigida, Sophia Loren, and you can kind of see it here, Morticia Adams. Yeah, right? Seriously. Uh, this was a commissioned video for a birthday present for a friend, uh, Dalton the Authenticator Mortimer. If you would like to commission a video, just go on over to Ko-Fi. The link is in the description below. You can pick any of the uh, any of the categories there, and as you do, just pick any story, any character, any top ten list, whatever you care. I will make a list of. I've got one that's coming up that I think I would never do as far as top ten list. It's awesome. This kind of thing is really cool. And uh, please, by all means, check it out. It's done because, unfortunately, YouTube is squeezing the life out of I Love Comics. They are. They're just not sharing the videos, videos anymore. And that's created something else here that I would like to tell you about before we get started. And that's Old Man Comics. It's my new channel. YouTube squeezing the life out of I Love Comics. It's not coming back. I just don't see it. So I'm moving all my videos over there. By all means, check it out. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring that notification bell because that's what YouTube cares about these days. And uh, help, help me get that one going as well. I certainly thank everybody who's done that. And with all that aside, let's get this party started and dive on into the first appearance of Magic of Dispel. Walt Disney's Uncle Scrooge number 36. Admittedly, the copy I found is pretty darn old. So that's why even this has tears, rips, and somebody did math on the comic. I don't understand that. But I do look at the comic book covers, and guys, this is a very simple one. It would make a lovely poster of Scrooge McDuck, what with his money blanket and his money pillow, the whole nine yards. It's absolutely characterized to him, but it has nothing to do with what's in the book. So as a cover, kind of a fail. Is the day of sorcery past? Do oddball characters in odd places still stew up mystic charms and magic hocus pocus? Uncle Scrooge didn't think so until he met a sorceress in this tale of strange experiment. Uh, do I have to do the Donald Duck voice if I'm reading this? I, I hope I don't. Uh, yeah, I can't do it. I just, that's not happening, guys. You know I don't do uh, No, no, that's, that's Stitch. Oh, Hannah means family, and family means no one gets left. Yeah, that one's not. I can't. No, no, can't do Donald. No, okay, we're just going to read it off, gang. All righty. Hi, Uncle Duck. Yeah, that just doesn't sound right anyway. Hmm. Okay, how to approach this? How to approach this? Uh, so Donald Duck walks into Scrooge McDuck's office, and he sees him polishing dimes, and he just says, Oh, I'm not doing anything. I'm just polishing my dimes the that got moldy from disuse. And Donald's like, Whoa, I recognize this one. This is the one you showed me to double dozens of times it's your very first one he says yep and donald's like you know some people think that that that's the secret to your wealth that somehow it brought you luck and he's ah thriftiness brought my wealth and this is just a symbol of that thriftiness nothing more and then donald duck notices a uh, young lady that's walked in and ladies and gentlemen i give you the first appearance of magic at a spell who announces herself as such and says she's a sorceress and asks is Mr. McDuck in? Where his secretary's like, oh, I can't say he's not. He's sitting right over there. Donald overhears the way she introduces herself and says, she's a sorceress. You're not going to let her in, Uncle Scrooge. Of course, anyone wacky enough to think herself a sorceress is bound to be harmless. That's a horrible Scottish accent. Just go with me. Alrighty. Uh, come in, Mr. Spell. Thank you, Mr. McDuck. I'm here in the interest of a great experiment. Oh, my tests have shown that coins which have been touched by very rich men possess rewarding powers. So, so I have traveled the world over buying coins from its richest men. You are the last and the richest of all. You think we plutocrats have a sort of a Midas touch, do you? <laughs> what, what is your uh, great experiment, if we may ask? 
I believe that if I melt these coins together in the sulfurous fires of Mount Vesuvius, their mystic powers will fuse into a super amulet. And with that amulet, I too can become rich, rich, rich. <laughs> Of all the ways to get rich, your way takes the cake. Laugh, I am not bothered by jeers and derision. I'll gladly pay you a dollar for one of those dimes. Oh, a dollar for a dime? If you noticed, I dropped this Scottish accent. That's not happening. Yeah, I I'm not going to even try it. So Uncle Scrooge laughs at her, flips her a dime, and says, <laughs> I'll sell you a bushel of dimes for a dollar apiece. And she says, this one will do, Mr. Duck. And walks away, and he says, ha, 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 would be a sorceress. Imagine, oh, my, what's wrong, Uncle Scrooge? I sold her my number one by mistake. Wait a second. Okay, hold on, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, so I was told that Magic of Dispel was a villain. And she's after Mr. Mr. Scrooge, uh, Uncle Scrooge's uh, lucky dime. Except he just sold it fair and square in a business transaction that he agreed to. Now, unless something really egregious happens that Magicka Dispel causes, I'm sorry, she's not a villain. No matter what she decides, if she wants to trade it back or not. So Scrooge and Donald Duck make chase after him, and they pass by Hue Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and they're like, what's the rush, Uncle Donald? And he's like, we're chasing after a sorceress. Come along, boys. And in all honesty, that's a little bit irresponsible parenting there, Donald. I know you're just an uncle, but still, do better. Be better. So they finally catch up to Magicka Dispel before she gets on her plane and says, Oh my gosh, I, I want to sell you another dime. I that one's lucky to me. And she says, Okay, fine, so long as you touch the other one. And he says, Woo, this is my first dime. She's like, The first time? You, you must have touched that old coin many times. And then, of course, she caused the spell to get the dime back. Yes, finally, she's a villain. Okay, now she's a villain. Before she wasn't. Now, villain. Scrooge McDuck realizes she took the old dime back and gets into a panic, runs up the jetway. But unfortunately, the plane's already taken off. So he's like, oh, my gosh, I've got to get a speed plane to chase after. And Donald's like, hold on. You have to make sure she's still on the plane. And Scrooge is afraid that if he, she knows that he's going to chase after her for it, she might ditch the dime anyway. Magica hears their plan. So she scooters off to wherever she's going while all the others go on to, and I kid you not, this is what he calls it, my supersonic ramjet X-99 as they're heading to Rome. But before they take off, a young lady says, I'm in distress. Please help. I missed my plane to Rome. May I ask for a lift? I'm a very famous movie star, Gina Lulladikita. Duckita. Oops, I read that one wrong. And so they decide, okay, sure, we're going to let you on. And the boys are like, wow, that's the darkest pair of dark glasses I've ever seen. While the X-99 ramjet is in the air, the boys kind of uh, get a little suspicion and ask, what's in your bag? And she opens it up, causing the boys to go to sleep. And let me just tell you, don't, don't drug kids. No, not, not without them knowing about it anyway. Donald Duck knows some sleeping, thinks nothing of it. And then the plane lands, and they let Gina Lola Duckett get off, and the boys, uh, after that, wake up. Easy peasy, simple pagey. So Huey, Dewey, and Louie notice Gina Lola Duckett walking across the runway or whatever you call it, the tarmac, and they're like, hey, let's follow her. And they notice she goes past a pillar and another woman comes out. So they're like, where'd she go? And they say, wait, what if she was the other woman? So they go back to Scrooge McDuck and Uncle Donald and say, hey, you don't have to wait for Magicka's plane because we think she's already here. And we find out that Scrooge McDuck must be spending a ton of money to get a dime back. Seriously, because he's got detectives all over the city. When well, one of them comes up and it says, hey, we've got a lead. We have an Interpol report on that sorceress, Mr. McDuck. She has a small sorcery shop in the village of Sulphuria on the slopes of Mount Vesuvius. And I keep trying to say Uncle Scrooge because of Christmas Carol. And I know that's on me. But uh, yeah, Scrooge McDuck says, I'll go there immediately so I can surprise her if she slips through the net. Get going, driver. When an old lady comes up and asks for a ride, saying that she's one of the detectives and she can lead to the, them to the, their quarry. My goodness, I can't talk right now. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so uh, they ask, wait a second, what's in your black bag? And she goes, my lunch. And they're like, ew, garlic and onions. And frankly, I would have the same reaction. 
But then she's like, oh, dude, I've got some disguises for you. And she hands them out. And they're like, what kind of disguises are these? And they look like they're all fishtails. So <laughs> this, is, this is silliness. I'm sorry. It really is. So uh, Magica says, oh, it's fish suits to fit you. <laughs> fish fish suits to fit your simple minds. And he's like, the sorceress. Is like, okay, you know what? Everybody but you, Scrooge, had noticed it, okay? Everybody but you knew this. And she's like, yes, the sorceress. Now hop into the cart, my numbed pursuers. You're going to help me through your line of detectives. And yeah, he just she dresses like fish, dressed like a fish wife. The guy's like, we're not after a fish wife. Get going. And so she comes to a fork to the road and announces it. Ah, my finny passengers, here are the road forks. One fork goes south toward Vesuvius. The other fork goes to the cat food factory. Hold on, the races are out there. Okay. And then slaps uh, the, the donkey, and he goes running off with a cart to the cat food factory. And she's like, go, go, you trust-fuming billionaires, not stand between me and my perfect amulet. Now save time and distance. Let's read that again. Go, go, you trust and fuming billionaire, not stand between me and my perfect amulet. Now save time and distance. Okay, that's better. All right next but seriously gang i i have to ask you something see uh i keep stuff like that in where i mess up but i keep going anyway because i'm not a big fan of the plastic channels which really does sound like they're reading off uh i know i'm reading some here if you think that's unprofessional and want me to stop let me know in the comments below or if you don't mind the mistakes and the fact that i own up that i make them put that down there below uh, as well i want to see which way it goes here Scrooge, Donald, and the boys arrive at the factory, and they manage to get their arms loose, but realize, oh, no, they're going to make cat food out of us when some guy stops them and says, what are you doing? Why are you dressed so crazy? Like, you're not going to make food out of us? He's like, no, there's, this isn't a cat food factory. It's a paper flower factory, which makes me think, so if you were a cat food factory and you noticed it was just guys in suits, you would still carve them up into cat food? That's gross. Cut to Magic Dispel, Magica Dispel, going up to a building marked Sorcery, that's convenient, which has a sign outside that says, Spells cast, hexes hexed, evil eyes refueled, ogres for rent. Cool, good to know that Shrek has a job and there's a black cat outside, by the way. And she's like, oh, the crucible must be one of the finest fire clay, clav to resist the great heat of the volcanic fires. And she pours all of the coins into it. And we cut to Scrooge McDuck, who's in a panic. He's like, oh my gosh, I need to get to Vesuvius. Someone's like, Vesuvius is a four-hour drive. I don't have four hours. By then, my precious old dime will be melted by then. And they see an airplane coming by. Oh, that's the flyer who comes once a week to take our paper flowers to Paris. And he's like, I have some paper flowers here in my hand that I'll wager he'd rather haul. And of course, he's waving money. The airplane pilot takes Scrooge, Donald, and the boys over the mountain of v Mount Vesuvius where they realize they have to jump out, but they're five ducks on one parachute, so they go down fast, fearing that they're going to hurt, and instead landing in a pile of goose feathers. Scrooge McDuck wants to rush the sorcery shop, but Donald talks him out of it, saying, No, the, she'll just blind us. And he's like, Yes, we need disguises. And this page is just setting up for the finale. You got Huey, Dewey, and Louie going out to get some disguises. You got Donald and McDuck going out and following Magicka. Magicka's getting the clay pot ready, and she walks up Vesuvius. She brings some blinders with her, but then she hears somebody in the trees ahead. Magicka investigates and sees two sheep. At first, she's like, ah, they're just sheep, but then she's like, wait a second! This seems convenient, and she throws down some of her blinding potion, poof, and she's like, oh, it's Scrooge and his meddling nephew, and just for good measure, she throws down two more what she calls foofs, and decides they're stunned enough that she can make it up to Vesuvius, not knowing that Huey, Dewey, and Louie are following close behind. But they decide they can't go after Magicka, not yet, because... Uh, but they decide they can't go after Magicka, not yet, because Scrooge and Donald are just wandering around blindly, almost falling into a pit. So they tie them both up, saying, this'll hold them and they'll be safe. They run towards Magicka, but before they can do anything, she throws down three blinding spells. And yet they still capture her.
And, of course, save the coins from the fire. The coins! You kids saved my dime! My dime! My dime! Well, don't touch it, Uncle Scrooge. It's hot. How did you kids avoid Magicka's sorcery? How come you weren't blinded by your magic flashes? We used an old trick of hers, Uncle Donald. We bought ourselves some dark, dark glasses. So Uncle Scrooge gets his old number one dime back and things are again as they were. It only got a little darkened by the heat, but otherwise it's still the same. Run faster, Uncle Scrooge. We're not out of the woods yet, they say as rocks are hurled at their heads. We took all of Magicka's flash blinders, but there's nothing to keep a frustrated sorceress from throwing rocks. She says as she throws the rocks. And the end. There you go, gang. That is Magicka Dispel's first appearance. And what did you think? Let me tell you what I think. I thought that was a lot of fun. Now, I'm a big fan of Carl Barks, and I'm a big fan of uh, the DuckTales, Donald Duck cartoons, Walt Disney cartoons, the, the comic books and everything. Uh, so I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Granted, simple, but, you know, it's kind of for kids. So I could, I could forgive that. Let me know what you think. Not only of the story, but of the video in your in the comment section below. You know, don't forget to click like, of course, share. That's really important, and to get word out about the channel. If you haven't done it already, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Ring that bell because that's all YouTube really cares about when they decide to care at all. Also, if you don't mind helping out the channel, go on over to uh, Ko-Fi or to Patreon. Just drop a dollar in the till. Helps keep the lights on. Uh, helps keep making videos for you. I'd like, thank everybody who's already done that. And if you want, you could commission a video as well. Go on over to Ko-Fi. The links one, once again, it's in the description below. And you could pick out of any category, any character, any story, or uh, any team, or anything like that. Love to do that. I'd like, thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.